All right, welcome back to the channel. Guillermo Rigondeaux is supposed to be fighting for the WBA championship belt against Labri uh, Labario Salas in December 7th for a belt that he should already have. And I love it. Let's talk about Guillermo Rigondeaux, El Chicao, in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel, subscribers. If you are not subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell icon, and that way you can be notified when we release more videos. Also, I want to say thank you to everybody that supports the channel, encourages the channel. My supporters, thank you so much for watching the video all the way to the end and commenting, sharing, and liking, and let me know, you know, hit me with the questions or hit me with your opinions, and we can chop it up and we can chop it up. And thank you supporters for coming to the live streams Monday through Friday and OG Boxing Talk Sunday morning. Definitely thank you everybody over there in Fanon, on the Patreon Fanon's uh, business and politics. The support is greatly appreciated and we got great content over there for you. Let's talk about this, man. One of the greatest uh, disservices that I've seen in boxing <clears throat> in the last uh, several years, in the last of uh, this century, has been the treatment of Guillermo Rigan, of Guillermo El Chicao Rigan Diao. At the hands of Bob Arum, at the hands of HBO Boxing, in the hands of and at the hands of the WBA. If you guys don't know who El, Ch El Chicao Rigan Diao is, you obviously you know, nah, you know who he is. Cuban two-time gold medalist, 122-pound champion that shot that shocked. The casual fans of the world, when he beat Nonito Donaire handily, handily to win his title. And I do believe he won multiple titles at that point in time. But, you know, he's a Southpaw Cuban counterpuncher. He doesn't fit Bob Arum's style of what he, he wants to sell. So, despite having good numbers on Showtime and they're on, I mean, excuse me, on, on HBO, good viewership numbers for this, put it this way, the same viewership numbers that Vasily Lomachenko had on, on HBO, Guillermo Rigondeaux had on HBO. Virtually the same numbers. Both of them Olympic gold medalists, two-time Olympic gold medalist. Sean, uh, Guillermo Rigondeaux is the only, but Guillermo Rigondeaux on the other hand is the only guy to actually beat a top five, some people consider top three pound for pound fighter in the world at that time being Onito Donaire, right? And that's not to diminish Lomachenko. That's to tell you the status that Guillermo Rigondeau was at 122 pounds before he got what people call and what I think is affectionately described as blackballed by Schultz, by HBO and by Bob Arum. Was not, give, was not given fights when he was fighting on HBO, they're criticizing him every step of the way through the fight, complaining about his boring style, complaining about how he's not exciting to the fans. You know, the HB, you know, the HBO treatment, the HBO treatment that if somebody doesn't check Pauli Malignaggi, it, that Pauli Malignaggi is going to continue to give boxers that he deems not exciting or technically not sound or whatever it is that his opinion is that he's that he's blasting out to the millions of people that are watching the fight and affecting their view, their their view of the fight. But that's the career of Guillermo Rigondeaux. Guillermo Rigondeaux then goes into a, a situation where he just can't get fights. At 122 pounds, he was ducked by, he ducked by Leo Santa Cruz, ducked by Abner Mares, ducked by uh, Scott Quigg, Scott, ducked by Carl, uh, Carl Frampton, I have to go back on the Scott Quigg because I don't quite recall if it was Scott Quigg as well. But definitely those three guys that move up to 126 pounds to fight each other safely out of the way of Guillermo Rigondeau. Right. So now you have a then you So you have a situation, though, right, where Guillermo Rigondeau is fighting over in Japan, fighting guys, uh, fighting guys that are like a foot and a half taller than them, <laughs> who probably should be three weight classes up. You know, knocking these dudes out, breaking people's jaws for low money. He comes, he holds on to the WBA championship. And then after he's at the tail end of his career and there's a lot of public 
you know, a lot of public push to get him to fight Vasily Lomachenko. Right now, I knew he was going to lose. I believed heavily he was going to leave this, lose to Vasily Lomachenko. But why should he have to fight Vasily Lomachenko? Because that's the only way the man's going to earn a living. Thank you, Bob Arum. Thank you, HBO. Who can find some way to call guys like Chocolatito, the you know the greatest pound for pound fighter, all this crap, jumped all these weight classes, all the garbage they said about him. He doesn't even pan out. The fighter after fighter don't pan out, but they like his style, and they decide that that they're the one that they're gonna that they're the person that they're gonna promote. Skills, talent, uh, uh, results be damned. So. Guillermo Rigondeaux gets the fight with Vasily Lomachenko. He loses to Lomachenko. He fights Lomachenko at, at 130 pounds. He's a champion at 122. That's two weight divisions away. And what do they do? What does the WBA do? They strip him of his title for losing a fight two weight classes above him. It's ridiculous. It was effectively the Guillermo. It was a. This was that they did the the effect of what they did. They made Guillermo Rigondeaux defend his 122 pound WBA title against Vasily Lomachenko, one of the best fighters in the world, at 130 pounds. It's ridiculous, ridiculous, and strip him and strip him. Why though was the, why though did he get stripped? Why did he get stripped? What was the rule that the WBC used? Why? Let me tell you why. Because of Jim Lampley on HBO crying and complaining because Luis Flores took a dive. Luis Flores got hit at the bell. It was like ding punch, ding punch. Moise Flores on the under, I do believe that was the un, on the undercard of the uh, Kovalev uh, Ward fight. Kovalev Ward 2, I do believe, was that it was on the undercard of. Flays out, fakes like he get, got knocked out, and the, instead of letting him get up, giving him a penalty, doing something like that, you have, you have Jim Lampley, who is notorious for not liking Guillermo Rigondeaux, Calling the commissioner of the, the California State Athletic Commission, because I do believe the fight was in California. If it was in if it was in Las Vegas, then it was the Nevada State. But he calls the athletic commission. Calls the, it was outside, so I'm pretty sure it was California. Calls the athletic commission over and says, you need to call this a no contest, or you need to disqualify Guillermo Rickendow, because look what we see on the camera. This punch was after the bell. They HBO and lit Jim Lampley put a ton of pressure on him. And they call the fight a no contest and, a more, and order an immediate rematch for Maurice Flores, who took a dive, who tried to take advantage of the fact that the, the guy got hit at the same time that the bell rang, acted, did this comedic acting job. And uh, now, as a result of that, as a result of the WBA ordering a, a, a rematch for Maurice Flores, uh, calling the fight a no contest, the belt is on the line for Guillermo Rigondeaux against Lomachenko. It was disgusting. So the fact that Guillermo Rigondeaux would be fighting for a WBA title, and I do believe this is at 122 pounds. There is no there at the at super bantamweight. There is no there is no WBA super champion at the time. They've got I think Roman is like the regular champ. There's some gold champ, something like that. But the actual belt that Guillermo Rigondeaux had that he got stripped of, he's now being allowed to fight for. So when I read this article, it sounded like the guy that wrote the article, I'm not going to bring his name into it, was making an argument that Guillermo Rigondeaux, that, that the Roman, whoever is the regular champion, needs to be elevated to the super champion and let Guillermo Rigondeaux fight for the regular. Now, all the nonsense about all of these belts being around, you know, to the side, that's an issue unto itself. No, Guillermo Rigondeaux should still be the WBA champion at 122. He should still be it. He never lost it. And, and just, like, just like ESPN, 
got involved in a fight with the fight with Tyson Fury and Otto Wallin, Otto Wallin, just like they went over to Tyson Fury's, went over to Tyson Fury's corner and let him know, let him know the officials ruling that the fight was called by a punch and therefore affecting the decision that was made in the ring, potentially affecting the, the decision that was made in the ring by their corner to continue fighting. Just like they got involved in the fight, HBO got involved in the Guillermo Rigondeaux fight and affected this man's career. Got him, eventually got him stripped of his belt because of it. That man should be fighting for the title that he should have never lost outside of the ring to begin with. I'm telling you, Guillermo Rigondeaux and the treatment of Guillermo Rigondeaux, this great, great fighter has been, it's, it's a modern day example of the, the unequitable treatment that can be imposed on fighters if a promoter and a network don't like their style, don't like them, don't think that they will sell to the market that they want them to sell to. It is something that needs to be remedied. It's something that needs to be fixed. Guillermo Rigondeaux needs to be made whole for what they have did to him and what they've done to him throughout his whole career, which is one of the reasons why I get, I, don't, I gotta say, I get hot when people talk about how Lomachenko beat Guillermo Rigondeaux and Guillermo Rigondeaux, you know, that may, that's how Lomachenko, that adds to Lomachenko's, you know, great resume. No, it does not. Guillermo Rigondeaux should have never been in the ring with him. Guillermo Rigondeaux is a 118 pound fighter who's fighting at 122. And he should have never been put in a situation of having to jump two weight classes to fight Vasily Lomachenko. And the only reason he was put in that situation is because of the financial blackball and the social blackball and the stigma that was slapped on him by HBO and by Bob Arum. It's absolutely disgusting. And I'm glad that he's getting a shot at this WBA title against an older fighter like himself, who more than likely he more than likely he'll beat to get the title he should have never lost. And hopefully that he's with the PBC now, he'll actually make some good money in his career. Because, dude, if you would have been left to the to those type of guys, he would have he would have been blackballed his entire career. Anyway, it is what it is. Let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.